In this episode of the Speaker Series, celebrating 400 years since the life-changing journey on the Mayflower, we look at the trade partnership between Britain and America and explore how that transatlantic relationship has shaped both countries through trade, business and economics. Bronwyn Maddox, thank you very much for joining us. It's 400 years since the Pilgrims made that journey on the Mayflower. How did their arrival across the Atlantic help to shape the world we live in today? The best way I can think of putting it is that they helped shape America, and America has shaped the world that we're in. They shaped it with their sense of, first, why they were leaving the old world, some of them for uh, religious freedom, some of them to make a better economic life for themselves, and those two factors were very important in why people went to America. But also they arrived with ideas of government and how you should govern yourself, and those were some of the things that began to shape America. How important is it for businesses on both sides of the Atlantic to, to work together to maintain that relationship? Well, I think it's very important for the commercial relationship between the, the countries um, that businesses do try that. What I say if I'm discussing it with businesses is that uh, it's actually, as they know very well, it takes the effort, it actually takes going there because it's amazing how much you can go to the other country, you know, go to Britain if you're in the States or vice versa, and find that the news and the feelings and the passions of people just strike you anew, even if you thought you were keeping up with the news. And I think businesses really have to put in that effort if they want to keep tra transatlantic ties of actually um, working very hard at it. The separatists made the journey on the Mayflower because of religious viewpoints perceived to be irreconcilable within British society at the time. Can governments learn anything from events 400 years ago to, to be more tolerant and to stay connected to people? Um, to have laws, to have constitutions that explicitly protect minorities, to have an electoral system that is felt to be fair, including by those who lose, those are the kind of things that uh, make people feel connected with their system of government, even if they don't like the government of the day. Obviously, we've got a divided society right now with Brexit. We've got to deal with that. We have a divided society in, in, in Britain with Brexit, and, we, and the United States is very divided between red and blue states, as they're called, between those who support Republicans and, and within that Trump and, and others. And these feelings go very, very deep. Um, how you unite a divided country, I think, is one of the most difficult tasks in modern politics. And it is bringing all kinds of new skills out of politicians as they try and reach across those boundaries. To me, I think politicians are rising to that challenge. They are actually finding words. Um, some of them are divisive, but some of them are, 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 do unite people. What to me is beginning to break down perhaps is, is, is political parties, which are finding it harder. You must have met some fascinating characters on both sides of the Atlantic throughout your career. Is there anyone in particular who's really stood out to you? Bill Clinton, I would say, one, Madeleine Albright, trying in a very diplomatic way to advance our uh, diplomatic ne negotiations. Condoleezza Rice, again, the kind of sense of trying to bring political weight and also strength of character to bear on the world's problems. That can be very moving when you come across it. And some of them, of course, would have been descendants of the Mayflower. Many people claim to be descendants <laughs> of the Mayflower, and I think we're into some tens of millions. Um, and and uh, there's much uh, genealogical in industry into um, working out what happened to uh, you know, the very few people who arrived and survived from the Mayflower because, of course, they had a terrible first, first winter. Um, I think that it's, it's a sense that, that the roots of the Mayflower, and the, the, it, it's very little like it that has such a grip on American ma imagination of so many people. And that, uh, you know, so many people who now really write, spread right across the United States feel, no, that's part of my history. And do you think Brexit will bring us closer together? This is a really interesting question. From some perspective, you could say yes, in that the UK, in moving away from uh, the EU, is going to look more towards the United States, and that's certainly how some of the Brexit politicians have, have argued it. Um, and that may be possible, and I think we're certainly in trade terms going to have a, a quite a hard choice between are we going to stay closer to the EU with its standards and regulations or more move towards what I think the US is going to want. And also we've got a new Prime Minister uh, around the corner, I mean what is that going to do to the relationship do you think? These relationships always do depend a lot on personality and uh, when the personalities don't get on that 
can bring a degree of chill. I think relations between the countries are too established for even a you know really bad relationship to get to get in the way of that. But there's no question that when two leaders really hit it off. Um, as for example Ronald Reagan and Margaret Thatcher did, that it brings a, d a degree of communication that just isn't there otherwise. Bromwell Maddox, thank you very much.